Let's talk about the AOD9604 peptide. In this video, I'm going to show you the research on AOD9604. I'm going to show you the results of that research and the amount of this peptide that was used in those clinical trials. I'm also going to share with you important information you need to know if you're going to try this peptide for yourself. By the way, I am unbiased. I'm not selling this peptide. I don't work for any supplement company or pharmaceutical company either. Rather, for over 30 years, I've been helping people understand the research on supplements sorting fact from fiction and helping them find products that are right for them. So if you find this video helpful, absolutely share with your friends so they know this information too. So it's been stated that AOD9604 was originally developed to treat obesity. In fact, some have gone so far as to state that the AOD in the name actually stands for anti-obesity drug. And while that may indeed be true, it is interesting that I did not see this phrase used in any of the official studies. Nonetheless, those studies do appear to show that this peptide may have some effect on body composition. AOD9604 is actually a segment of human growth hormone, and that's why in some circles it's called a fragment of HGH. Now, human growth hormone does have a share of fat burning and muscle building research. However, that same research also appears to show that it has some negative consequences, such as increasing your risk of insulin resistance and diabetes and several other things. Human growth hormone is 191 amino acids long, AOD9604 is 15 amino acids. They pull 15 amino acids out of that larger molecule, and that is what we're talking about here. But because that peptide is unstable, scientists attach a tyrosine amino acid to the peptide to improve the stability of that peptide. So you can sort of think of this peptide as a kinder, gentler version of growth hormone with all the pros and none of the cons. Now, I believe you deserve to see the research on dietary supplements. That's what my channel is all about. So what does the research say about AOD9604? So let's begin with this paper, which came out in the year 2000, where 15 obese mice were given 500 micrograms per kilogram of body weight of this peptide each day for 19 days. Compared to mice that received saline as a placebo, the mice that got the peptide actually gained less weight. It was actually 56% less weight than mice that did not get the peptide. Now that is impressive, but let's be clear, the mice did not lose weight Rather, they gained less weight, and that's an important distinction to keep in mind. This study also revealed that the peptide did not elevate blood sugar, and it also didn't increase the risk of insulin resistance either. Remember, that's something that growth hormone does, but this peptide does not seem to do that. In this next paper, which came out a year later, obese and lean mice were given either human growth hormone or AOD9604 via stomach injection daily for 14 days. In the obese mice, the peptide and AOD HGH were shown to have profound effects on body weight reduction. Nevertheless, AOD9604 did indeed have a weight loss effect, and this was said to have occurred even though the mice did not eat less food. So those two studies appear to show that this peptide has some benefits in mice, which is great, but what about for us people? That brings us to this company-sponsored safety trial of the peptide, which summarizes the results of six human randomized controlled trials. If we look at just the results of these trials, we find some interesting things. For example, even though the AOD9604 peptide is derived from human growth hormone, taking this peptide does not raise growth hormone levels in people. Just like with the mouse research, the peptide doesn't appear to increase the risk of insulin resistance in people either. The peptide also doesn't appear to trigger the immune response because antibodies against the peptide were not detected, and that's a good thing. Overall, side effects were pretty mild, although at higher doses, it was speculated that the peptide might cause an increase in gastrointestinal distress. Here's a summary of those six clinical trials. As you can see, four of those investigations involved the use of oral AOD9604, and two of them involved injections. None involved the use of a topical peptide, although let's stick a pin in that for a moment, and the dosages in the oral studies range from as low as a quarter of a milligram per day all the way up to 54 milligrams per day. I also want to show you this table that I created which summarizes all the research I just discussed and their findings. As you can see from this table, the peptide doesn't appear to have any serious reactions 
although in the summary of the human research I just mentioned, it was speculated that an increase in GI distress may be seen in those who took more than 54 milligrams per day. Other side effects that I've seen reported include headache and fatigue, although given the lack of human research on this, I think that's open to speculation at this point. Now we're not done yet because I also want to call your attention to some interesting reports that are mentioned in the patent of AOD 9604. For example, they mention this report of a 24-year-old soccer player who has a tear in his calf muscle that was resolved after just two weeks of using one milliliter of the peptide topically at a dosage of 600 micrograms daily, yes, topical application of this peptide. They also cite this report of a 22-year-old male soccer player who saw his hamstring injury resolve after three weeks of using that same dosage, again topically, twice daily. And there's also this report which presents the improvements in shoulder tendon problems after just three weeks. After looking at these reports, the peptide actually reminded me of the claims being made for BPC-157. And if you want to see the research on BPC-157, I'm going to pin my videos on that to the top of the comments below. So the reports that are mentioned in the patent are indeed intriguing. A few thoughts on them. Number one, they appear to be reports of single individuals, not human clinical trials. In fact, I'm not even sure if these reports were ever published in a medical journal, which if they weren't is weird because they're very impressive results. I also didn't see any peer-reviewed research on the topical application of AOD 9604, which again is weird because if corroborated, that would be a game changer. And on a related note, I also didn't see any research where the peptide was given to people who had tendon or muscle injuries either, although there is this intriguing paper where injections of AOD 9604 appear to improve cartilage regeneration in rabbits that had osteoarthritis. Now, if you're intrigued by this research and you're thinking of trying this, it's good to know who makes this stuff. So the company that originally developed the peptide was called Metabolic Pharmaceuticals, which was based out of Melbourne, Australia. That company appears to no longer be in business and their website didn't work when I tried it. From what I was able to discover, in 2009, the Metabolic Pharmaceutical Company actually changed its name to another company called Calzal. And then in 2014, Calzada changed its name to Polynovo Biomaterials Limited, which is also based in Melbourne, Australia. But here's what you really need to know. A year later, in 2015, Polynovo sold all of its AOD 9604 intellectual properties to another company called Lateral Pharmaceuticals Limited, who are also based in Melbourne, Australia. As you can see from this patent, Lateral Pharmaceuticals changed the name of the peptide to LAT8888. In other words, LAT8881 is the new name for AOD9604. So keep that in mind as you're researching this for yourself. Based on the reports that I just mentioned, it's quite possible that athletes may be interested in this peptide. I would exercise caution if you are an athlete, and that's because WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, considers this peptide prohibited at all times. In other words, they're saying don't use it ever. And just in case you're wondering, yes, there is a urinalysis test that can detect this peptide, so you have been warned. Okay, so now let's address some questions about this peptide. The first question I want to address is, is the 177 to 191 fragment the same thing as AOD 9604? Remember, this peptide comes from human growth hormone. What they essentially do is they pull the amino acids from the 177th and 191st position of that larger molecule to make the peptide. It's not the same thing as the peptide itself because researchers will also add tyrosine to that peptide to improve its stability. Number two, will it help you sleep better? It may or may not. At this stage of the game, there's no evidence either way. I didn't see sleep mentioned in any of the human research that I uncovered. So what about healing of joint injuries? Remember, there are those very interesting reports of single individuals which appear to show some very interesting results. And there is also that rabbit study that seems to show a regeneration of joint cartilage. That's apparently where we are right now. I don't see any clinical trials on humans as of yet, but do stay tuned because when new research comes out on this, I will do more videos on it. When is the best time to take AOD 9604? 
I've seen some people state that you've got to take it in the morning, before breakfast, after a long fast to maximize the results. Where are you getting that information from? None of the human studies that I uncovered was there any mention of a best time to take this peptide. In other words, anyone who says you have to take this peptide at a certain time is essentially guessing, do you need to cycle this peptide? In other words, go on it for a period of time and then cycle off of it for a period of time on this question, I will take a guess and say it's probably best to cycle it, and that's because of the lack of quality human research of long-term what happens. What's the best way to store AOD 9604? Well, if you are taking this as a liquid and you're injecting it, I think it's best to keep it in the fridge, away from humidity, away from sunlight. That's probably gonna make this stuff last longer. If you are taking it as a supplement or a lozenge, I don't necessarily think you have to keep it in the refrigerator, but I would keep it away from direct sunlight and humidity, and that's wise for all supplements as well. What about traveling with this peptide? I would not take the injectable form to the airport. I think that would red flag very quickly to TSA. And on this same note, I would not travel to other countries with the injectable form. I just think that is asking for a whole lot of trouble. Does AOD 9604 work better with supplements? I have heard from some people who've stated that you've got to combine the peptide with various supplements to maximize its results. And again, to them, I would say, where are you getting that data from? I have not seen any human clinical trial where the peptide was combined with supplements. If this research is to be believed, the peptide alone is all you should need. Next up, how do you find a quality peptide? Whether we're talking AOD 9604 or any peptide, here are my thoughts. First thing I would say is, don't fall for claims such as made in the USA or 99% purity or made in a re FDA registered lab because that's essentially just marketing hype. Instead, look for a company that is showing you a certificate of analysis that was conducted by a third party independent laboratory. A certificate of analysis is a summary of the research findings of what is in that product. It'll tell you exactly how much AOD 9604 or whatever peptide is in that product. It'll also share with you any toxins or heavy metals that are present as well. When you're looking at a certificate of analysis, you wanna look for the name of the lab that conducted that research and that lab should also have an address. I suggest you look that address up and see if it corresponds to the name of that laboratory. And the certificate should also list the name of the person who conducted that testing. I suggest you also look that person's name up as well. In my opinion, any company that does not share their certificate of analysis with you, swipe left. So in my opinion, the research on AOD 9604, also called LAT 8881, is intriguing, but for now it should be viewed as preliminary. Despite the impressive claims that are being made about this peptide on the internet, the actual human research on it is less than spectacular. And that does not compute because this peptide has been around for over 20 years. And that's why I remain unconvinced of the benefits of AOD 9604. However, stay tuned because as more research comes to light, I we'll do more videos on this.